The relatively small country of Estonia, with a population of 1.3 million people, has provided nearly 300 million in aid to Ukraine. They have also taken in over 60,000 refugees. Christian Preek is Estonia's ambassador to the U.S. Mr. Ambassador, welcome to the program. Thanks for, thanks for having me. So let's start with military support um, to Ukraine. Can you give us an idea of the types of weapons that you've been sending there? Well, the types of weapons that we've uh, given to Ukraine have ranged uh, from uh, personal weapons like, uh, uh, like uh, rifles, like um, uh, anti-tank weapons, to uh, more significant uh, weapons like uh, uh, howitzers, uh, different classes, certainly a lot of am ammunition, uh, protective gear, uh, winter uh, clothing and so on so uh, so, uh, so on L last week though uh, our government together with uh, Norwegians and Netherlands sent uh, uh, the third uh, military field hospital uh, to Ukraine the two previous ones uh, we've uh, cooperated with uh, with the Germans and this is uh, significant let's talk about the training because you also train Ukrainian soldiers there in Estonia on some of that equipment how extensive is that it is quite extensive uh, we have to remind the viewers that uh, Estonia is a country of uh, 1.3 million so uh, when we talk about uh, n uh, numbers in hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of Ukrainians uh, being trained and not only trained but also while being trained uh, e equipped and uh, and uh, being sent back to Ukraine with this equipment, uh, this is uh, significant. And you mentioned the, the field hospital because there's a lot of non-military aid that you're sending. Can you give us a, a, a bigger idea of what you're sending? Uh, again, uh, there is, let's say, uh, non-lethal military part where uh, we've been focusing heavily on uh, different uh, uh, medical equipment. Uh, again, the, uh, the field hospitals, which are significant, so-called Road 2 hospitals. But th there is also a very significant uh, uh, civilian humanitarian aid uh, part. Just last week, again, uh, our government uh, sent uh, a number of uh, city buses to, uh, to the uh, city of Kharkiv. Uh, we've uh, we've uh, sent uh, city buses also to other, other regions because we, we believe very uh, strongly that these people who have been not just affected but uh, devastated uh, by, by this uh, uh, horrible aggression, they need to see at least glimmer of normalcy, glimmer of hope uh, on the horizon even while the, uh, while the war is ongoing rather than waiting until the, the victory and, uh, and uh, only then uh, seeing, uh, uh, let's say, non-civilian aid coming in uh, or non-military non aid uh, coming in rather. How much is Estonia currently spending on defense as a, uh, as a portion uh, compared to the GDP? Yeah. Estonia, uh, for many years, has been uh, among the front runners in NATO when it comes to uh, uh, military spending uh, uh, as a ratio to, uh, to GDP. We very strongly believe that, uh, that uh, in order to uh, be part of a, a collective defense alliance, we uh, uh, have to start from our own uh, d defense. So we've been pushing uh, at 2% uh, uh, level or beyond uh, for many years. This year uh, we are uh, approximately at the 2.85% uh, of GDP and actually uh, we are moving towards uh, 3% and even beyond uh, in, in, in the coming years. So there are plans to increase that even further? Uh, exactly, and and we are talking about uh, not just mundane uh, uh, items or things, but we are talking about uh, major uh, weapon pro programs. Just last uh, Friday, uh, uh, Estonia signed a, a major uh, uh, defense contract with with the U.S. to develop the uh, long-range uh, artillery uh, uh, program uh, based on uh, U.S. HIMARS systems. Estonia does not border Ukraine, but it, it does um, take in over 60,000 refugees at this point. Ukrainian refugees have come into to, um, to Estonia. Tell us about the services that you're providing and the impact it's had on Estonia. Right. Uh, uh, the uh, refugees that we've received, uh, it's one of the, I would say, the most significant contribution that, uh, uh, contributions that we've given to uh, Ukraine. Uh, as you mentioned, the, uh, the number exceeds 50,000, it's uh, around uh, 60,000 uh, uh, refugees, which, uh, again, to put things into perspective, it's uh, 
around 5% uh, of our uh, entire population. So uh, 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 to compare again, uh, uh, to draw a comparison with, with the US, that would be more than uh, 13, around 14 uh, uh, million uh, people here. Uh, not all states have that, uh, that many peop uh, people. We've provided them uh, with, uh, with the services that uh, uh, Estonians with Estonian uh, citizenship or Estonian uh, resident, uh, residence permit would get uh, uh, normally otherwise. So, uh, uh, for example, the, uh, uh, these refugees are uh, eligible for the uh, universal health care. Uh, we've uh, stepped up our efforts to make sure that all the kids can go to school. Uh, uh, the, the, we don't have any uh, refugee camps in Estonia, but rather we've been able to, to find uh, uh, the government, uh, the uh, private citizens and, uh, and the uh, municipal uh, governments together have uh, been able to find uh, uh, shelter and homes to all of them. And, uh, and we strongly believe that uh, uh, this is necessary uh, to make sure that th these people don't suffer even more. And Estonia does border Russia. Are you concerned about a direct threat from Russia to Estonia? Yes, we do uh, border, border with Russia, and uh, this is the reason why we have such an extensive, uh, uh, long-term experience with, with Russia. This is the reason why we uh, have, unfortunately, uh, been led to believe that, uh, that uh, Russia uh, is currently showing its, its true colors rather, rather than uh, uh, doing something uh, of, uh, uh, out, out of order, so to say. But uh, uh, when, it, when it comes to uh, Russian military threat, we don't see it uh, as an imminent threat uh, this week or, or, or next month, just because uh, uh, y uh, the fight in Ukraine has uh, drawn so many of their uh, resources, including from uh, uh, behind our immediate border. However, we do uh, uh, believe, we, we have reason to believe that uh, uh, when it comes to long-term uh, trends, uh, Russia uh, clearly uh, priori prioritizes uh, uh, military power over any other um, uh, domains of power, and, uh, and uh, Russia prioritizes the Western military uh, uh, direction, uh, strategic direction for them, which uh, leads us to be believe that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, they will bounce back, and they will uh, uh, bounce back quicker than many would uh, expect. All right, Ambassador, we're going to take a quick pause here. Stand by and we'll continue. Sure, thank you. Up next, I'll continue my conversation with Estonia's ambassador to the U.S., Chris John Preek. Stay with us. I'm back with Christian Preek. He's Estonia's ambassador to the U.S. Mr. Ambassador, I want to ask you about cybersecurity. Um, Estonia has been a victim of Russian cyber attacks. Let's go back to the attacks of 2007. Tell us what happened and how did Estonia respond? In the spring 2007, Estonia was the uh, first state victim of a uh, state-sponsored uh, state and uh, uh, st st state cyber attack, let, let's put it that way. We have we had uh, massive uh, so-called uh, DDoS or di distributed uh, denial of service uh, attacks against Estonian uh, uh, both uh, uh, government uh, inf information systems as well as uh, against uh, pr private uh, companies like uh, media m media uh, outlets and and banks, and uh, we did suffer uh, some uh, uh, damage, but uh, but uh, fortunately we were uh, quite quick to recover from, the, from these attacks, and I, I believe we are, uh, uh, due to the, these attacks, we are actually better in cyber defense than, uh, than many countries. I was going to ask you that. Estonia ranks as the third most uh, secure country on the Global Cybersecurity Index. Tell me about the steps that you had to take to get there. I think it, it all starts from, uh, uh, from the mindset that uh, w when it comes to uh, uh, cyber, it's no different than, uh, than the real world. In the real world, we consider uh, uh, security and defense as uh, one of the primary uh, features that, uh, that any, any government or any system, any society uh, has to take care, care of. Uh, cyberspace is no different uh, in, in that sense. And, uh, and uh, therefore, uh, we've put so much, much emphasis on uh, building up uh, the uh, 
online services. But while doing that, we, we have considered uh, uh, the security not a, as an add-on, but as a fundamental integral part of, of the systems. So uh, this is one, uh, s uh, the architecture. Uh, secondly, uh, there's been a lot of uh, 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 trust building within the society so that uh, different stakeholders uh, know each other and can operate uh, together and and thirdly uh, uh, no trust no architecture uh, is uh, good without uh, uh, constant training and uh, uh, constant testing of the systems and uh, well speaking of training yeah. the uh, Estonian organizations do conduct a lot of cyber training right. and um, exercises there is a NATO exercise that just wrapped up Tell us about that. Yes, there, there was the uh, NATO exercise called uh, Cyber Coalition. Uh, uh, if I'm not wrong, this is uh, the largest uh, 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 cyber defense exercise in the world. Uh, and uh, and this, is, uh, uh, this has become a, an annual uh, tradition. It's, uh, it's run on uh, Estonian uh, 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 nationally built uh, 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 cyber infrastructure. And, uh, and uh, we believe that uh, this international cooperation uh, in cyber is getting more and more important. Uh, it, it helps us to prepare for any contingencies. And, uh, and uh, I would uh, even, even say that it helps us to prepare avoiding uh, the, those contingencies because we, we know how ca we can rely to, uh, to other stakeholders and uh, what to expect from uh, adversaries. Mr. Ambassador, I wonder what you've learned so far watching this war unfold. What have you learned about Russia? What have you learned about Ukraine? Uh, Russia has uh, crossly uh, miscalculated and uh, uh, mismanaged uh, uh, this, this war. Uh, as uh, the saying goes, they have strategically uh, already lost a uh, long time ago this war. They certainly have underestimated uh, 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 the West but most importantly, they have underestimated uh, uh, Ukraine and the Ukrainian uh, resilience. Now, uh, uh, when it comes to uh, Ukraine again, uh, they've been uh, proven to be uh, really tough warriors, but they've, they've also be, uh, uh, proven to be uh, very uh, flexible and resi resilient as a society. And uh, uh, we believe that uh, uh, democratic, free, resilient societies will always prevail uh, the authoritarian regimes. And that's what I wanted to ask you. What's at the root of Estonia's strong support for Ukraine in this war? Firstly, of course, we want to do the morally right thing. Uh, to see uh, someone uh, suffering uh, uh, like that. Uh, it's some, uh, just something that uh, no human being uh, uh, can, uh, ignore, uh, can ignore, ignore. But secondly, and very importantly, we understand very clearly that this uh, war is not just about Ukraine, but this is about uh, the, uh, the future of, uh, of uh, uh, our own uh, uh, security, uh, freedom uh, and uh, independence. This is actually uh, something about uh, the, uh, the future uh, of the, uh, uh, let's say, Western uh, lifestyle as we know it. So uh, uh, however this uh, uh, conflict uh, uh, ends, this will define the, uh, the security uh, structure, the, the rules of the game uh, for the decades to come, not only in Europe, but, uh, but we believe also uh, globally. And uh, we ha so there is so much at stake. Th so this is existential not only for Ukraine, but for us and for, for many other uh, countries. All right, Mr. Ambassador, thanks so much for coming in. Nice to talk to you. Thank you, Mimi. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.